How you doing everyone? Firstly, thanks again for all your interaction recently here on my YouTube channel. For this next video, I am joined by a very special guest. So you'll be pleased to know I'm not on my own. I am joined by professional chef, Charlie Jeffries. Charlie works out at the free Michelin star restaurant in the Dorchester Hotel. So he definitely knows his stuff. So if you like your beach foraging, and you love your cooking, and you love your fishing videos, then this one is definitely for you. Not only do you get to see Charlie Jeffries foraging, cooking, and fishing here on my YouTube channel, you can catch him on MasterChef The Professional 2022 that starts here in the UK in November, where Charlie battles it out against the biggest and best professional chefs that we have to offer in the UK live on your TVs for you to sit back, relax and watch it home. Good luck in your up and coming competition Charlie, it's going to be a privilege to watch you cook. My name's Wayne, this is myself and Charlie Jeffries foraging, cooking and fishing on the mighty Chesil Beach. How you doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back to the beautiful Dorset coastline here on Chesil Beach. Yeah, this one's a little bit different. I've got a very special guest, but I'll bring him along in a minute. But if you like your fishing videos and you don't mind your cooking, then this is definitely the video for you. So you need to work all the way around the fish. You go along the back, along the belly, and then as soon as you've worked all that off and the fillet's pretty much off, then you can start to take off. Welcome back to a beautiful afternoon in Dorset. And with me, you've got Charlie. Nice one. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. I'm excited. Yeah? Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, so what we're gonna do tonight, obviously, as you know, for a mess around in my videos, I'm eating stupid noodles with fake needles and we're having a bit of a laugh. <laughs> But I've got a pro chef with me. So what we're gonna do, or what you're gonna do, is a bit of foraging for us. Yeah. And we're gonna hopefully catch maybe some bream and some mackerel. Some mackerel, yeah. And you're gonna show us how it's done. Get on the barbecue, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's gonna be good, I think. Yeah, and in return, um, I'm gonna help you out with your fishing a little bit. Yeah. So as you can see, um, Charlie's just having a practice. We've had a lesson only for about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, and he's got about a quarter of an hour. So using a continental style rod, it's all about your positioning, and it's not about brute force and grunt. Obviously, naturally, that comes into it when you get your technique, but this is the first time Charlie doing this sort of fishing, really. Um, so what we've got to do is get his body in nice position, get him casting straight and safe. So as you can see, he's doing really well. So I teach it in a format by numbers. It's something we use in the military. So Charlie has left foot pointing forward, right foot nice and relaxed, left arm straight, right arm slightly bent, head up, pull down. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's easy to remember it. This is what I call a default cast. Obviously Charlie's got to go away and practice this. And this is his first time doing it. So yeah, it's not perfect, but he's doing really well. He's really safe. And actually it's a really good cast. And that's all I hope for. Left foot forward, right foot nice and relaxed. Head up, left arm straight, right arm, there you go. Obviously, as I said, it's a nice safe cast. Lovely. That's flying out there. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, mate. It's nice and safe. How are you finding it on your body, though? Easy. Easy. No, so, no stress at all, it's, yeah, just technique. It's technique, so. Obviously, you've only been doing it for like a quarter of an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it's great. So, you know, with a bit of practice, you'll be away. And next time we go out, we'll get you casting off the ground. But you don't really need to be doing that sort of thing with a four it's, and a half it's going meter rod. Further than I've ever done. So. Yeah, and you're fishing in the zone on yeah. Chesil Beach. Anyway, we leave Charlie in peace. We'll come back in a minute. We'll talk over some rigs. We we'll do a bit of baiting up, and then we we'll get onto the good stuff like fishing, foraging, catching fish, and eating fish. 
with a master class from Charlie. So what we've done here, we've just baited up. The top two have got black lug, yeah. and the bottom one's got squidlet. All right, like I said, it's free below, plenty of movement. As you said, you've never fished with a rig like that before. No, not with the weight at the top, yeah. I know, you think, oh, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna get all tangled. Yeah, it's gonna be, all, yeah, weird, but. The only thing it will do is you're not gonna be able to cast it as far as you can with a nice symmetrical clip down rig. Yeah. Aero, this is non-aerodynamic. But I think what you gain in movement, especially fishing for bream, distance doesn't really matter yeah. here where we are. And you're definitely casting far enough anyway. First one going out. Good lad. That's absolutely perfect, mate. Yeah. Remember it's deep as well, all right? Yeah, let I it feel sink. That. That's perfect. Let it sink. So let it sink nice on and the... high, so it might be all right anyway. Is that all right? Yeah, just let, normally just let it sink a bit, especially with the tide coming in. That's absolutely perfect. Was it any different? Did you feel any different with uh, a lot a lot of people struggle when you put a rig on and you got hooked, everyone's yeah, like, oh. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but that was that was probably uh, your best. Yeah, cast. I'm pretty happy with that. Well done, mate. So, so we've literally just got the first rod in the water, and I think Charlie's got his first bring bite. I think so. Should we should yeah, we So in? what we do, so just pick the rod up. It's under tension, obviously, and just wind a couple of times. We don't need to strike or do anything drastic. We don't want a pair of lips. Just lean into it, the fish is there, look, swimming yeah. away. So just keep the pressure on. Well done, mate. Happy days. All right, first cast. <laughs> it doesn't always work like that, you know. <laughs> but nice and gentle, right? Wind it nice and slow. Remember, we've got small hooks. What I say to people is, sometimes we wait all day for a bite. Let's then, enjoy it. And then it. you go crazy. Crank it in, yeah? yeah? We've got a bit of weed on there, so I'm just gonna walk down and see if I can film the fish, all right? Yeah. So keep the pressure on, don't stop winding. Nice fish. Huh? Can you feel it? It's, it's heavy. Yeah? Well done. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So this on the earth rig. First cast, plenty of movement. Nice and gentle. Oh, it's a cod. It's a cod. It's caught a cod. What the hell? <laughs> First chuck, a Chesil Beach cod. <laughs> what a mate. On the earth rig. What the hell? That is mad. There's been a few about. There you go. Oh, I do, I mean, I can't believe it. To I be know. a first cast to have a cod, Chesil. I know, it's not a bream. Dreams come true, I guess. I know, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put that one back or keep it? It's in size, because I've measured it. Do you want it? Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. we'll do something yeah. with it? Yeah, let's do it. Someone's just coming over. It's a cod. It's a cod. Yeah, it's strange. So we finally got two rods in the water after that exciting start. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were just talking about fish and I was saying normally, obviously we're here to catch mackerel and bream. So you said, especially with mackerel, we eat them straight away, don't we? Yeah, mackerel is brilliant to eat straight away. Yeah. Fresh like that, mackerel is amazing. Bream the same. Bream the same. Bass, it's a bit different. Bass, it, when when they when they obviously die straight away, you get that rigor mortis, yeah. and they're really really strong. So leaving leaving a bass in the fridge for a couple of days it is is no harm at all. And actually, it's better to eat it like that than to have it the other way. Yeah. Everyone thinks you need to eat fish straight straight away, but when you have something straight out of the sea like that, a couple of days in the fridge really helps with, especially like a fish like bass. Have we said the same with cod? Yeah, s similar with cod. Yeah, similar with cod. Cod is the opposite though, isn't it? Like you said, bass is more rigor, solid, yeah. whereas cod is quite mushy. Yeah, you have yeah different sort of fibrous sort of, of texture of the fish itself. Um, but cod is always a bit like that. You can you can leave it and you cannot leave it. It will still have that sort of texture, completely different yeah, to a yeah. bass, a bream, a mackerel. Definitely, yeah. Um, it's more meaty. Isn't it's it? more meaty, and yeah, it has a different type of, uh, of fiber. Yeah, like a, I mean, a bass is more meaty and bream. Yeah. But yeah, we're just gonna. So we're nice and relaxed now. The sun's shining. We've had a fish first cast, so hopefully <laughs> that hasn't put them. So sometimes you have the first cast 
Well, you get a fish first cast and that's it, but that's not going to happen today. <laughs> We're going to get some bream, because we haven't really got a target yet, have we? No, so it doesn't really no. take. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does. But yeah, good. I think it beats it to a target, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's why people come to Chesil. Throws up anything. Yeah, cod. We're not quite sure, are we? Because obviously cod tastes all right, but we were just saying, it's not the best tasting fish, is it? No, I think, I and mean, it's totally overused as well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, bream, I, I, I prefer bream, bass, I mean, mackerel. Oh, the best. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. Fresh mackerel, when you cut them open, it looks like you get like the shimmer. Yeah, the glistening of the, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's the oil, because yeah. it's very oily fish. Mm. Yeah, it's perfect, mackerel. We'll get some later <laughs> on the pop-ups. It's a nice way to fish for them. Instead of feathering, yeah. I'll put some pop-ups out and catch them properly. Hopefully. Can't guarantee everything. Usually they come about the last light, don't they? Yeah, First yeah, light, just, yeah. It, just it's getting dark. But look, we'll leave you on the rods. Let's see if we can get any more bites. We've had a little rat on the left. So what's your fight now, Charlie? It's sea fennel. Yeah. And by the name, it really is sea fennel. So it's, it tastes like fennel and from the sea. Like aniseed. -y. Yeah, it's got a really aniseed flavor. Very salty, of course. Like all sea herbs, they've got a saltiness to them. But yeah, beautiful. Obviously, Perfect with fish. Obviously, Charlie knows what he's doing. And he's educating me as well. <laughs> Don't just go out. <laughs> De definitely not, yeah. <laughs> and just think, that looks like something after watching this video, because you might get yourself in trouble. But, yeah, um, no, you don't want to be doing that. So obviously, before you go out foraging, make Check. sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, that's the first bit. First bit of forage, yeah. So what else are you looking for, Charlie? I've seen some samphire on the, on the fleet there. So I've done that, I've picked that before, and it's beautiful. Samphire is great. Um, very salty, got this sort of, um, it's, it's, it's like a sort of a bursting of, of liquidy, salty water inside, which is amazing. Um, and actually some sea purslane, which I saw on the, um, just next to the, the, just before the sandfire. Right, let's go and have a look. Yeah. So this is all the sea purslane, and then you can see just in the horizon, you've got the sandfire as well. That's actually, when the, the tide comes up, that'll be covered in water. And then the, obviously the, the sand fire will be covered. That's why you have that sort of liquid inside. So this is sea purslane. Lovely. They're all quite similar, but they've all got their own sort of different textures, different tastes as well. And this one's a bit more bitter and, um, and still salty like the other ones. So would you generally use them on fish or? Just yeah, fish I mean, or it's, meat it's as well? Meat as well, we've used it with meat because they have that saltiness and obviously meat go, you can season anything with, with salt of course, so yeah, it works, works really well with meat, but it's going with the sea, why yeah, not put it, it with the fish? Definitely. It's, it's great, it's a bit yellow, but it's probably been damaged with the sun a bit. But. Yeah. Nice bit of fleet mud. Yeah. For a bit of flavouring. <laughs> Nothing better. Natural taste. Bit gritty. We'll have to wash it. <laughs> so but would you wash it in seawater? Yeah, or? I mean we've got the sea there, so we can yeah, yeah, fine, we yeah. can wash it directly in the sea, but at home you can wash it obviously just in your tap or whatever. Yeah, it's Brilliant. perfect. Just right for cod. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Was a bit surprised with the cod, but watch out, look above your head. Right on time. Bugger me. So we've had a couple of taps on this rod. Any weight? Mm, not really. No. A bit, but yeah, nothing. I wouldn't have thought it's fish. A lot of weed. Yeah, there's a fair bit of weed about still. So it's another tip, um, what I was explaining to Charlie, 
especially someone in his position or like a lot of you we all haven't got time to come down here all day have we no exactly so yeah. when we're here we need to maximize the time we're fishing so as before we've got a spare rig ready all baited up so now he's just wound in get this one straight on and we're away so we're spending the whole time fishing if we were to sit down now bait up three hooks you know it's 10 minutes yeah we were hoping for a mackerel or bring. We haven't actually tried for a mackerel. We just thought, as we call it, the luxury of a cod. It's cod only. <laughs> and the height of summer. <laughs> we're not going to go hungry, are we? No, definitely not. Yeah, so. so you need to work all the way around the fish. You go along the back, along the belly. And then as soon as you've worked all that off and the fillet's pretty much off, then you can start to take off that, yeah. each, each fillet. So here you're doing both sides first. Yeah. So that's definitely a tip for you, everyone, because I see a lot of people doing it, and granted, I used to do it myself. Yeah. As you get excited, you fill it off one side. It's amazing. And well, then your second one looks like someone's just cut it off with a, I don't know, a <laughs> stick. Hacksaw. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's, it's three minutes in the star, but... It's what it is. It's good. It's all right. The fish is still warm, which is strange. That's some nice fillets, mate. Hang on, I'll get the last bit. No, that's all right, actually. I'm not too bad with that. And this one will just then come off as well. Just finish off the belly. Look at that. Yeah. Fine Chesil Beach cod <laughs> and they look perfect. Like you say. Yeah, it's not too bad. It could be better, but. No, it's fine. So as you can see, the lemons are on. Yeah, lemons are on. Get a good char on them. Basically want them to be burnt. And then there's the fish, all my herbs, got mint in there, rosemary, thyme. Really give them a good smash over the, over the fish to get all the flavors out of them. And then just directly on the, on the barbecue. Here that, it's red hot. Yeah, nice. Chisel beach cod. Mm. So if you just remind everyone what you forage, yeah? Yeah, so this is the sea person here. This is the samphire. And if I can get a piece, where is it? There it is. This is a sea fennel. Beautiful. My favorite sea fennel. Look at that, there you go. That's what you want, burnt like that. And trust it. It's, it's, the wind is getting that hot, isn't it? Yeah, do you want to move it? I just don't want, the, I don't want the fish to be burnt. Lovely. These herbs I'm literally just gonna put into my salad, into my yogurt. Keep it fresh. Bit of the sea fennel. That wind is definitely getting that barbecue up. It is, isn't it? It's roaring. Up. Get the sun fire. It's definitely quite romantic, Chesil, this evening for two guys out fishing <laughs> yeah. and cooking. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's a bit of a date, I think, isn't it, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> a bromance on the beach. Yeah. Still fishing. Oh, look at that card flaking. That's nice. So how long would you cook that for, mate? 
literally just that was a couple of minutes you cook 80 percent on the of the fish on the skin side and then just finish it a couple of minutes on the on the flesh side and it will just that would just flake yeah, away and because yeah. because it's so fresh as well you want to leave it a bit pink so it's just it's still a bit pink in there and that's going to continue cooking as well but i mean you could eat any fish from from chesil yeah, sure, straight yeah. off raw so yeah it's not a problem is it? definitely keeping the fish pink is is the way forward that's brilliant mate there you go beautiful cod with a cucumber salad yogurt capers and forage Sea herbs. Beautiful, well done, mate. So, what we do in this situation now is drop the rod down, point it at the target, which is obviously where it's now, yeah. and, and walk just back. slowly walk back, yeah. So, don't be high sticking it. Um, if it goes, it goes. That's just life. Hopefully it'll be caught on just one of the hooks. Yeah. Is it coming? Yeah. Well done, mate. So there's a tip for anyone. If you stand there just yanking it, which Charlie didn't do, I just asked him to put a little bit of pressure on. Still got a bit of weight on it, unless yeah. it's weed maybe coming with it. Okay, then we'll try. Sometimes you get wrath and stuff, take you in rocks, especially where we are. On chisel. So yeah, we're just dropping down the one rod now. We've had a few bites on this, this rod, but we're getting quite a lot of weed coming through. So we're not sure, it could be a fish. Could be weed. Yeah. Weed is not a friend at the moment. No. Well, the sun's gone down. You've got shorts on. <laughs> and you're cold. Definitely cold. Definitely cold. Um, yeah, well we got out, we learned a bit, didn't we? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I, I definitely learned a bit. Yeah, good mate. Yeah, and I um, obviously, it's a joy to watch you cook and everyone will enjoy it. Um, that's our sort of last cast, so. No, it's been great. Thank you very much for, uh, for teaching me, for sure. It was, uh, it was good. Then we get out again when you get a bit more time. Yeah, um, definitely, yeah. we we'll get out in the winter and do some proper fishing. <laughs> yeah. Although you catch cod in the summer. So yeah, I know, there you go. So you don't need, need to worry about it. What a surprise that was. I know, and it tasted beautiful, so thank you for that. No, it's good. It's all right. But, all right, well, thanks everyone for watching. That's it from me and Charlie. And um, we'll catch you again soon. Yeah, thank you very much. No problem.